Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Biz Coach and Coffee. I am your host, Biz Coach Steve Feld. And my goal is to stop making business owners from suffering entrepreneurial depression and start making running their business much easier. Because business owners and entrepreneurs hire me to crack seven figures without burning themselves out. Today, we have another wonderful guest with us on Biz Coach and Coffee. We have Kara Jensen. Now, Kara, this one's great. Now, she's the president of Be Outdoors Arizona and founder of the Triffid. Am I saying that right? Yes, you are. Uh, Triffid Online Marketing. Kara's experience ranges from automotive, construction, and real estate. Her marketing career began while a realtor when she had grown tired of useless, templated industry websites and worthless social media marketing packages. I think that's just not in real estate, it's in many industries. So she reinvented into a marketing company. And after the real estate crash of 2008, she's passionate about outdoors. She's involved in many, many conservative or conservation organizations. And in 2020, took over the reins of Be Outdoors Arizona, whose mission, whose mission it is to encourage continuous nature-based learning experiences that enrich the lives of children. Her big vision is to combine both companies serving the outdoor recreational industry, get more kids outdoors, and expand nationally. Welcome, Kara. Thank you. Well, Happy excellent. That is a phenomenal mission, especially nowadays. Kids are all locked up. They are in, in doing a lot of my research and in, in creating this organization or building it from what it started as. Uh, I found out that uh, 90% or kids today spend 90% of their time indoors. And most of that is on a screen. And uh, another stat I read was that kids spend 50% less time playing outdoors than their parents did as children. So that's one of my missions. Um, and in Arizona, we have so many people that move to the state that um, another stat I found out I was fascinated by, but is only 20% of the people over 25 in Arizona are actually native here. So that means you've got 80% of these parents aren't from here. So they have no idea how to get their kids outside and enjoying any kind of nature-based hobbies or activities other than school sports like football or soccer or something like that. And it's so true. It's like people move here, they move in the Phoenix area and they're like, oh, it's too hot to do everything. They don't realize all the things we have in Arizona. Yes. And a lot of it's an hour and a half drive away and it's cooler. And there's yeah. a lot to do. For those of you who are not from Arizona, we actually have ski areas here, believe it or not, in Arizona. <laughs> we have flowing rivers. You can go kayaking and fishing. There's we've our state is so diverse when it comes to topography. You drive two hours and you can be in a completely different landscape. It's fascinating. I love this state. Absolutely. And we have a giant hole in the ground, too. We have a couple of those. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't seen the big one, <laughs> we got it here for you. Well, excellent. What got you into the outdoors space? Well, it started in 2004 and um, a friend of mine was a hunter and I had never been hunting, didn't know anything about it. And he asked if I wanted to go scouting with him on an antelope hunt. And I didn't even know we had antelope. So I went and I actually went with him on the hunt and I was really just fascinated how difficult it was and um, just just everything about it. And then when I had the fresh game meat, it was the best stuff I'd ever tasted. Um, I took Hunter Ed and learned all about the conservation aspects, um, how hunting evolved. Um, you know, hunting evolved 100, about 100 years ago. Uh, the sportsmen got to realize that it was the market hunting that was wiping out all the animals. You had market hunters hunting for the meat to sell and the fur and the feathers to sell. And they were just wiping out herds of animals. And so the sportsmen said, we need to take some sort of measures and limit the amount of take. And that's how all the game and fish departments sort of evolved. And a uh, hunting regulation started. So you have to have a hunting license. You have to have a tag for a particular animal. 
and you have a small area to hunt within uh, for like a week out of the year, uh, you can only take that one animal. And um, so they started managing it. And then all the funds that are, are pay for this for the game and fish departments are all created from the license sales and the tag sales and um, some excise taxes on the equipment. So none of the state tax dollars go towards these, these departments. And so they're only funded by the hunters. And the, so your wildlife conservation, it's all funded by hunters. And it was just, it was fascinated me how it all works. So I just started getting involved in a lot of the different groups. And then I found this group and um, their website had crashed and that's what I was doing. And so I volunteered to fix their website and, and the rest is history. Now I, now it's mine, I own it and I'm running with it. That's fantastic. It's funny you mentioned about going hunting. It's like, a, I'm a city boy, mm -hmm. born and raised in a city. So buildings around, you always had walk to a grocery store, hop on a bus. And during high school, I moved to the Western Slope of Colorado, which is definitely out in the sticks. We are way up in the mountain. And they said, you know, how are you going to have meat for the whole winter? I go, what do you mean? You just go to the grocery store. And they're like, have you seen any meat sold in the grocery stores here? And I was thinking, I haven't. What's up with that? And they said, you got to go hunting with us if you want meat through the winter. And that was my first hunting experience. And I was like, okay, this is insane. But it was a lot of fun. My whole body hurt from the trekking. Oh, yeah. And I had to take the school actually shut down for a week while everyone takes hunter safety courses. Yep. Updates all their licenses. They fill out all their hunting licenses that week. Game and fish is on site at the school. That's awesome. <laughs> and and here I'm coming from the city. It's like, hmm, our gun safety was a little different because we got patted down for guns. Yeah. <laughs> a little different, yeah. A little different. Yeah. So what's your favorite thing to go out and explore with kids and teach them about nature? Uh, I don't know if there's a favorite. I think it's just fun to take them out and, and just see that look of wonder and excitement on their face when they discover something. And um, I mean, it's, it's a great way, not just hunting, but just hiking and fishing and, and you know, just exploring. It, it, it opens, I think it opens up possibilities for um, critical thinking of like, well, how does this work? If this happens, what's gonna happen next? You know, if you go this way, if you go that way, or if you step on that log over the stream opposed to that one or this rock, you know, what's gonna happen? And it gets them to think uh some critical thinking and then it, it just it, it's also such a, a mood lifter and it really grounds I think it grounds the kids and and just you know it's hard to get bored when you're outside exploring yeah, there's always something to do exactly and, and it's not um, a tv yeah exactly and with the outdoors I have hundreds of events in in so many categories. Um, I've got about 180 partners now of different nonprofits that have activities and workshops in, in camps for kids. And then not only that, I've got all the maps, I've got uh, a lot of educational uh, resources on the site. So if you want to learn how to do something, I have the where, what, how, and when to do it so that you're not going out there, going somewhere where you're not supposed to be, you're not breaking any laws, you know how to you know, clean up after yourself and leave, don't leave your trash and just all these little things that you might not think of. And um, so that's what I want to bring up is just a responsible, uh, a next generation of responsible stewards for, for the outdoors in Arizona. Oh, excellent. We're going to take a quick break here to get a word from our sponsor. We'll be right back with Kara. This episode is sponsored by Spotlight Books. Get your expert book completed in 30 days. If you don't have an expert lead magnet book about you and how you serve your market, then visit www.spotlight-books.com. Link is also in the show notes. Put a spotlight on your expertise. And we're back with Kara Jensen talking about outdoors, getting out there. It actually can expand your knowledge. And you also mentioned about critical thinking, just going hunting, going learning about nature. It's like many of the business owners, it's kind of stepping out of your comfort zone, expanding your knowledge, but it also to expand your mind in many different ways. Exactly. Exactly. Because I know even going camping, it's a place that you can actually put some deep thought in 
and think about your business in a different way. Now it's a quiet environment. Phone's not going off. Well, no self reception. Exactly. But you're also with a group of people too, helping and supporting you because you all need to work together. Right. Now, do you guys do a lot of that like team? It's not team building, but you got to work together when you're outside. Yeah, there's a, a lot of the camps uh, and there's there's learn to hunt camps. There's learn to, there's learn to camp camps. Uh, state Parks has a whole... A family camp out program across the state uh, and they teach people how to camp how to set up a tent how to build a fire how to cook over it you know if you've got to use the woods as a bathroom how to do it um and, and it's it's pretty fascinating and, and that's one of the things that started be outdoors years ago with the original founders is that all these organizations had a one-off program of how to go do this thing how to learn to fish but then once you went there once you're still not confident enough to go out by yourself and like, oh, I'm going to go fishing now. And you don't know what exactly what to buy. You get a story, you might feel a little pressured. So what we created was a, a what they call the nature walk or a next steps program. Mm -hmm. So if I, I go here and I learn the basics, maybe go again to get a little more comfortable. But where do I go the next time? Well, this organization over here has a little more advanced information. And you go there and you learn more and you meet more people. We've also created a Facebook group so that people could reach out to each other, ask questions and learn from each other. And then you get to the point where you can stay in the hobby and you're like, okay, I relate to myself as a fisherman or a hiker. I can go by myself now. And eventually I can teach somebody. And that, that's sort of the, the recruitment process that we have. Uh, they call it R3, re you know, recruit, retain, and reactivate. You'll get your people so that they identify themselves as the hiker, the camper, the, the fisherman, or the angler, so that they can keep continuing on and bring other people in. Nice. Now, could these, <clears throat> be, uh, could these be for like a business owner who wants to build team building and get into one of these programs to really, that's totally different than going to the retreat. And <laughs> exactly. There are some organizations and, that do that, that are on my calendar. I'm looking for more of those. Um, you know, I would imagine that a lot of the groups, um, a lot of the groups have volunteer habitat projects uh, where they go out and like antelope, antelope don't jump fences, they crawl under. So that group, they take the bottom wire of barbed wire fence and remove that, put on smooth wire, put it at a certain height so the antelope can go under and escape predators and get to other antelope herds and water and such. Um, so they do that, and then other groups, the Elk Society, they put uh, PVC pipe over the barbed wire on the top so the elk can jump over it without tearing up their legs. So there's work projects like that that would be excellent team building for uh, companies because they've got to follow certain instructions, do it the right way, and you work as a team and you work all day and you can do miles of fence in one day. Yeah. So uh, right now there's no specific groups uh, for team building for corporate, but you could create it. It would be easily created with one of those organizations. There you go, folks. If you're trying to build the team and doing something unique, but it's worthwhile and for the environment, it's for wildlife, definitely this is something to look at. That's yeah. a lot better than going to the retreat, listening to some speaker that bores half the people. And then meeting in the yep. bar for happy hour, right? That's the yeah. highlight of the whole retreat is happy hour. Right. And at these camps, you know, usually there's a campfire afterwards and there may be a cocktail or two there imbibed. <laughs> there you go. Have your have a happy hour at a camp, campsite. Exactly. Under the stars. <laughs> Great. It sounds like you, you definitely shifted from what you like to do to something that you are very passionate and love to do. Exactly. Exactly. It's definitely coming out in your voice. Would you tell like to business owners, you work with business owners a lot. You meet them all the time, everywhere. It's chase your passion. How would you tell them to get around that, to get there? Figure it out. Um, <laughs> I didn't know how I would do it either. Um, and, uh, you know, I had the marketing company and, um, you know, I I really didn't niche besides locality in Phoenix. And uh, I worked with all kinds of different businesses, which was great because I learned all kinds of new things, new industries. But, you know, I was just so passionate about this that when the opportunity came to help this organization with their website, I, I was like, yeah, I'm one of these people. I'll say yes to something, to an opportunity, and then figure out how to do it later. 
but this one I was like, well, this is a no brainer. And then what happened with this organization is, is a year and a half ago, they just, the board said, we're not meeting anymore. We're, we've lost our momentum. You're really the only one working on it. We're just going to shelve the project and maybe we'll, we'll, we'll try to revive it in a year or two. And of course, marketing, I know marketing said, you can't do that. You'll lose all the momentum we've already built. At that time, I had a hundred partners. I had the Facebook page was going and, um, I said, no, and I just, I just blurted out, no, you can't do that. I said, let me take it over. I'll run with the mission. And to my surprise, they said, yes. And then I was like, well, crap, what am I going to do now? So then I realized, well, this is kind of my niche. If I could do marketing for the outdoor industry and then support the organization, support these nonprofits, then that's what I love. I love doing marketing. I'm very creative. I have great ideas and all my customers have you know, they've seen a, a boost in their business from the traditional kind of marketing they, they did. So now what I can do for outdoor recreation type retailers and service providers, I can provide super targeted advertising by putting their ads on just the events that, you know, that are in their industry. So if it's a hiking shop, I can put all their ads and do customized advertising on those hiking shops. But in addition to that, I can offer other services. I'm involved in a lot of the legislative issues that affect the business and the outdoors. So I can make them aware of that. And then also can connect them with all these other nonprofits that they can support or that can support them. So I've just, and I don't see anybody else focusing on that, on that industry at that level. So that's, that's when I just realized, you know, with my aha is like, well, here's my, here's my do what you love. And, and I just figured it out. Oh, excellent. That's phenomenal. It's like, and one of the things is, that I think, you know, I'm a giver and we always have our guests give something to the audience, but I think tonight, today, we're going to do something different. I think today we're going to ask our listeners, what can they give to help support the nonprofit? You know, um, just go to the website, find some events, go to events, find us on Facebook, join the group. If you enjoy going outdoors, share your stories, share your photos. Um, uh, we also have newsletter signups for every category of, of activities, whether it's bird watching or wildlife watching, hiking, fishing, sign up. Um, if you want to contribute by, uh, helping out with the different newsletters, content, you know, we, we welcome that. I'm, I'm doing a big expand launch this year. I've got a pitch event I'm doing this Saturday. I'm very excited about. So right now, I just, I would love the support and the followers. And if you're a retailer, I've got sponsorship craft packages and the advertising packages. That's, that's what I'm offering. And just be outdoors, Arizona. <laughs> there you go. Get outside. Yes. Believe me, it's fun out there. Uh, we will actually have all Kara's contact information in the show notes. So please take advantage of that. Check it out. Get involved. Get outside. You know, take your your staff, your family, get out there and have some fun. Exactly. It's amazing <laughs> the things. I mean, I've lived in Arizona for quite a long time. And when I first moved here, one of my goals was learn the state. So I hopped in my Jeep and wherever the road took me is where I ended up. I just threw some stuff in the back. Nice. I got to see, I was really blown away. One one minute I'm in the middle of the desert and it's 110. An hour and change later, I'm putting on a jacket and putting it on the top because I am cold and I am in the just trees everywhere, pine trees, and it's just gorgeous. Yeah. yeah Being from Colorado, I love mountains. So got it. Got it. I'm mountain biased. Got it. Not a problem. We got plenty of those. <laughs> exactly. Well, great. Any last minute or last ideas that you like to share with everyone? You know, I, I highly recommend um, if there's something you'd like to do, whether it's, you know, going out in the, the desert and playing, or if it's a business idea, say yes and figure out how to do it later. Um, I've done that a couple of times in my life and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but, uh, you know, it's always been a great learning experience that's, that's helped me out in the future. And, um, it's probably made me a little more stronger and braver to say yes the next time. So um, don't hold yourself back. If there's something you want to do, just go for it. Say yes and figure out how later. That's a fantastic idea. And I, I tell people in business, it's like, 
you got to think some of the people who are just well known in the business world, what did they do? They had an idea and they went for it. They didn't know how they're going to do it. They just went for it and right. it turned out okay. Awesome. Just want to say thank you so much for being our guest and sharing your story. That was phenomenal. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Great. Don't forget to reach out to Kara and her organization in the show notes. And this is Biz Coach Steve Feld wishing you and your business much success. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. If you'd like to discuss how you can apply these strategies in your business, let us know. This episode is sponsored by Spotlight. Get your own expert book written about you in 30 days. Set yourself apart from the competition. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Also, feel free to give us your comments. We look forward to hearing from you on Biz Coach and Coffee.